Glory to God. I want to welcome everyone to another one of our Sunday celebration services. We're celebrating Jesus. We're celebrating the fact that we have salvation. We're celebrating the fact that we're here this morning. I said a little earlier, it's a blessing to be here, not waking up in a hospital bed. You don't have to ask me how I know. <laughs> I tell you, this is much, 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 much better. And it's a blessing to be here. It's a blessing to be able to go over the things of God. And, and especially this lesson that we're studying right now, love, the reason for everything. I can understand now when the scripture says that you will be wiser than your teachers. Because it says something to the effect that, uh, uh, well, people say things to the effect of, uh, what's this all about? We don't really know what this is all about. You can go to college and they can tell you that. They're still searching for the God particle. They're still searching for a lot of different things and they have a lot of different philosophies. And in their search, Einstein and some of the other quantum physicists of his day, they got to the point that they brought it down to a level to where they had to stop and start discussing whether or not there's a God. Because our God is so awesome. They just look, they just come up to things that they, 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 uh, they teach in school as though these are scientific facts and that they have all the answers. They don't have anything but questions. You not only have the answer, you are the answer. And they want to know what it's all about, and you just heard what it was all about. You're going to be wiser than your teachers because you're going to know that love is the reason for everything. I could direct you to a video right now that you could go to your computer or your phone. <clears throat> Excuse me. You could go to your computer or your phone and you could look this up on the internet. And you could see, a, a, it's, it's one of the most impressive to me is an animation of... Uh, theory that scientists have come to about something they taught you about in school, but they have absolutely no understanding of. How many here in school learn that there are things, everything's made up of atoms? Anyone learn that in school? And around the, an atom is made up of a nucleus which is usually what, some protons and neutrons? And around the nucleus, there's these little things that go around that are called what? Electrons. You learned that in school. Everyone knows that, right? If you check out the scientific thinking about just one part of this, called the electron, this is the latest thinking on electrons. And by the way, the, the, you'll usually hear electrons described as a cloud. Not the little BB they show you traveling around the nucleus of an atom. It's called an electron cloud. But the reason they call it an electron cloud is because, now listen to this, I'm not making this up. You'd, you'd think I'm making this up. You'd have to search it out for yourself. This is the reason that they call it a cloud because it appears to exist in two forms at the same time one being a particle, like the little thing they show you going around in a circle. The other being a cloud that has no substance, 
One time is acting like a particle, like you know, you shoot a BB out of a BB gun and it hit the wall. It's a particle, it exists. It, it, the other time, they're explaining to you that it's not a particle, it's the same electron now. It's a wave, like a sound wave. You understand the difference in a wave and a particle? Particle has substance, a wave is just a force. They say an electron, now this is the bottom line, your scientific minds. An electron is either a particle or a wave or both, if it exists at all. <laughs> well, that sounds like a lie, doesn't it? Sounds like the pastor, you made that up. You're not a scientist, you don't know. Go check it out for yourself. And here, you know, and could explain to them the whole reason for everything, and that's love. You could take them to the book of Hebrews and show them what it is they're saying that they don't know if it even exists, but they're seeing it. I mean, they have a whole lot of reasons for this. They have two people looking at the same thing at the same time. And if you put a chart on the wall, you'd say, well, where is it? And one will say it's here, the other one will say it's here, and they're looking at it at the same time. One will say it's a cloud, and the other one says it's a particle. But they're looking at it at the same time. Time. Now you can take them to the book of Hebrews if you wanted to and you could show them exactly what it is that they're saying. And God said, and when he said what he said, it became what he said. So everything that you see is made up of sound waves. And God said, yes. It's been wrong for you. No, they're not going to admit it. You could take them to Rome, to the book, book of Hebrews. It says, in the Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Isn't that what it says? Even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the morals, and right after that, it says the word has eyes. Is it talking about a word or a person? And the word became flesh. Isn't the word a wave? Isn't flesh physical? Love is the reason for everything. You want to know what this is all about? You know, people, especially young adults, when they get to be about 35 or so, they have, I don't know, this might happen a little sooner for females, but most men start asking the question, what's it all about? Man wants to know, what's it all about? I've lived here, been here 35 years or so. I haven't seen my dreams recognized, or I've had my dreams recognized, and I still didn't find the joy. I don't know what, I, what, when, when it is with women that they go through this, if they go through it at all. But I know with most men, it's somewhere around 35 years old, they start wondering, 
what's this all about? Well, it's all about love. And when you understand that, you have a greater ability to realize and to operate in cooperation with what this is all about. It's not about religion. Believe it or not, it's not about going to church. It's all about love. It's not about getting a religious title. Didn't we decide that over the past couple of weeks? It's not about being a Christian or a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Rastafarian. Or it's not about any of those things. All of those things are nebulous. And the church so proudly proclaims, I should say a large portion of the church so proudly proclaims that we're Christians. And then you go to the church and ask the proudly proclaiming Christians what a Christian is, and what do you get? <laughs> Might as well be singing that song. You get <laughs> what, what was that song you load 16 times? <laughs> what do you get? What do you get? Yes, what, what is a... Christian, what do you get? I'm talking about not from the world, I'm talking about from a church that proclaims to be Christians. What do you get? What's the answer? And the challenge for this is because there is no definition for the word that applies to believers in the Bible. It's only in the Bible three times, and then it was being used to describe followers of Jesus, and it was being used in a negative way. I like to use the example, say I've got a big nose, and people start calling me big nose. And I don't like that, because it's a derogatory t term. And then I call you up on the phone and I say, say, hey, how you doing? They say, who's this? And I say, this is Richard. Richard? Richard who? Richard, you know, Richard from church. I, what Richard? So you know who this is? Man, this is Big Nose. <laughs> well, what just happened? I started calling myself by the name that someone else was calling me, which was derogatory, which was a put down. So that's what happened in the church. People were following Jesus, and the people that were talking badly about them started to call them Christians. I said it first happened in Antioch. And the word is in there two other times. None of them described the followers of Jesus. But we seem to have picked it up really good. We might as well, maybe we could change it. We all start calling each other big nose. <laughs> what are you? I'm a big nose. <laughs> that would be funny for some people. Huh? <laughs> but God is so good that he would let his people know what this is all about. And it gives me such a great peace to think of going through all of the eternity of eternities, having salvation and going through the eternity of eternities with a God that's all love. And he created all of this. How long would it take us just to travel through this universe? How many years? Getting from one side to the other. The whole universe, just this one universe. If you went at the speed of light, and you went from this side to that side, how much of it did you see? 
whatever was along that plane. But how many planes would it be before you could see the whole thing? He doesn't talk to us about going through eternity with him. He talks to us about going through the eternity of eternities. And during that whole time, never coming to a place where we see the limits of his glory. He said, you're going to go through the eternity of eternities, going from one transcendent level of glory to another, never to cease. That makes me want to go into my happy dance. I just feel good all inside thinking of that. <clears throat> I was thinking, I thought about it, and I think in these little simplistic terms, I just thought about getting in something like a space capsule traveling through just this universe, just looking at the marvels of this universe and, you know, how big it is and how disquieting that would be to be setting up in there alone or having it piloted by some of the people I've learned to know. I wouldn't feel comfortable, secure, safe. But I'd see myself setting up in this big lounge chair, sort of like on a throne, and knowing that the ship is being piloted by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And I am so at peace, and so safe, and so comfortable, going wherever he wants to take me, seeing whatever it is he wants me to see, and knowing all the time that he is love, and that he loves me. That to me gives me a really good, <coughs> secure feeling. And knowing that that is my God from his word that he has given me. Knowing that that is my God from this love letter that he's given me. That's what this is. This is a love letter from a loving father to his children. Now when we say love is the reason for everything, I want us to just take, we're taking our time in going through this, but I wanted us to take and look at how this is revealed in the scriptures. We're talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and us. Is that right? In God the Father, we want to see through the scriptures that God the Father loved His Son so much that He created everything. All because of the love for his son. Now are we created beings? Well we want to see if we are. Are we created because of God's love for his son? If love is the reason for everything, wouldn't that be a good thing to know? So let's start this little venture through the scriptures. There's so many scriptures on this, but we're not going to go to all of them. You can go to more on your own study, but I want you to start off in Luke chapter 3, verse 22. <coughs> Luke 3, 22. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. It says, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. The him is Jesus. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So here the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit comes down. And I just see him enveloping Jesus in this love that his 
heavenly father is telling him about. Did Jesus know he was loved? Did he know he was loved by his father? No, we know he knows because his father just told him. Now what it says, Jesus, you're my beloved son, and you I am well pleased. Now this didn't just start here. This started before the creation. We're just pointing out that Jesus is the son of God's love. 